Well, you'd think that after all that pressure from the main topsail sheet bit, that I would want to move on. Um, but the decorative pieces on the top of that um, and on the top of the uh, main, main jabit um, pins, eh, challenging me. So I wrote back and forth to Greg and um, he and I have been discussing how we would go about making um, those decorative pieces. I've really been struggling to figure out how to do that. Um, so this is the process um, that I've decided to, to follow. Um, there are actually two approaches. One is that you make the bit pins square and just cut the top off and then put um, a, a, a pin at the top of the post and make the decorative piece um, separate from it and just stick it to it. And the second is to try and make it up all in one. So before I surrender to the easy method of, um, of, of simply um, using a dowel to hold it in place, I'm gonna try and make it up on the mill um, in, in one go so that the whole, the whole piece is a solid piece. Um, the second little issue is whether to panel it or not. Um, so I'm going to make it up first of all um, without any paneling so it just keeps the outside the external shape and then I'll make a second attempt at making it slightly smaller and putting some paneling around it to give it that recess and depth that you see in in this drawing here. So let's get started. So we're back to my drawing and um, we're just looking at this section here and I'm, I'm estimating that the uh, the piece is 20 inches long the the recess is two inches and it comes back to the post which is square at nine inches i'm saying at this point here the square is 12 inches and it has to come all the way back to seven inches um, and the reason for that is the gallows cross piece is seven inches thick. In fact, it theoretically should be slightly smaller than that, maybe six and a half inches. Um, but I'm going to bring it back down to the seven inches. Now, if we are going to put the panel in on it, it means we'd have to take this down to 11 inches. And I would say take this down to six inches. Um, simply because the paneling will build it back up. The first thing I've done is cut a piece of stock. Um, this is five inches long uh, by a little over a quarter inch. I'm going to cut a piece that is 11 inches and one that's 12 inches. The one that's 11 inches, we're going to put um, the molding on it. The one that's 12 inches, we're just going to leave the shape as it is. Just to remind you, every time we do this, we're making a pair. Now we're going to make a tenant which goes into the gallows. Now that we've got that done, we're going to measure that, um, that 20 inches, and we get um, 0.4166, and we're going to do that on the Priac, on the Priac so. Of course, we have to remember to include the measurement for the tenant, which is takes the measurement to 0.5. And we set the vise um, 8 degrees off, off center. Always have a little trouble making sure this is absolutely flat. And we put our mark. Now we take the mill end and line it right up with the cut and so it's just touching the piece. So that the mill goes back in the same spot each time we have marked, put a line on the on the piece that lines up with the edge of the vise. 
because that's what we're going to line up each time. So now we can simply stick it in, line it up here and tighten up. Again, making sure that it's flat. That's perfect. Now we do the same thing to the other piece. And yes, I can hear you screaming at me, but I do have a Sherline mill. That's not an issue. You simply draw out the taper on your blank and either take a small plane, like the very dust plane, or a sander and sand it down. You just have to make sure that the drawing is on both sides so that your, your surface is absolutely flat. Now we have to take the main bulk stock down to the 9 inches. And we do that by remembering the measurements, which is 4, then 20, then 2, to set the piece. So I've already, I've already set the veneer caliper. and start with a very low cut. So here we have the main jab bit. Here we have the main top seal sheet bits. And this is the straight decoration, which would fit in there and that really would work pretty good um, on this side it would be the same same issue it would it would work right about there now what we're going to do is chisel this piece down and then file it So this one we have made a little tighter. You can really see it here. So we're gonna try and add the strips to this one now and see how that comes out. Here's my first attempt. Um, of course, it's not acceptable. Each square is a little different size. The framing is different on each side. Top and bottom, all right. I use this, it was very difficult to, to frame it. But I have to say, it really does enhance the piece quite a bit compared to say that. Thought I'd try a little paint on it to see how it's come out. Um, It'll sand out and that roughness will go away.
I've made up two sets of gallows and you can take a look and see how the various pieces look on, on the gallows. Um, these were really not hard to, to do and they're already covered in a previous video so I'm not going to go through them. Um, so the cleanest one is actually the one without the moldings on it. Um, this one is made from paper and the others were made from different pieces of wood. The cleanest of the wood pieces that came out were using some very thin plywood, 164, which allowed me to sand and, and get it real low. Um, perhaps the best to scale was the paper one, but it didn't sand well. Here are the various pieces. This was done um, with a regular hardwood molding. Um, Again, I had trouble keeping the sides the same. Um, this one was done with the plywood and it's the cleanest one. Um, I should have put a fatter piece at the bottom and the top and this one would have been perfect. And this was one made using paper. And although it's probably the best in terms of reflective of scale, um, it doesn't sound well and I'm really not happy with the look. And then of course, this is the flat one with um, no molding applied to it. We're making the final bit pins now. So we've marked all of them with the relevant pieces. And let's hope there's no errors this time. The third piece is for any mistakes we might make. So here are the three pieces. It took no more than 10 minutes to make them. Fantastic when you know what you're doing. Now we're gonna cut the sheave holes on the middle. So now the three sheave holes are drilled. The first time I put the wooden um, plywood pieces on, I used full strength um, PVA. I have now decided to water it down by about 50%. Um, I just found it was, the glue was problematic and pushing the wood away from, from, the, um, from the piece. Once it dried, I sanded it down with the pen sander and then again using the square, put the second two pieces on each, um, each post and the end result is that um, I've got the bottom square to the right size. Just as a precaution, I took some thin CA and put it to the edge, to the ends, um, just to give it a, a, a little bite in case um, by cutting it off, I roughed it up. And then of course, sanded it down with a pen sander to get it flush to the edge, because the next piece is gonna come over the top of the end of those pieces. Now I'm putting on the second two pieces and it really went on without any issue whatsoever. It's amazing how nice and clean they are. Um, these are, of course, the square pieces, so it was very easy to line them up. And um, it really looks Pretty good, very professional. So now we're gonna mark the inside piece and I'm using this little setup here. And the key really is just trying to get them all the same thickness for when we line the pieces up. These lines really serve as a guide more than anything else because we have cut uh, very thin strips and um, they're gonna line up square again to the internal edge. Once that's all done, we go and back to the plywood sheet and cut out very, very thin pieces. You'll determine the thickness of this, but this is the thickness of the uh, internal edge um, plus the thickness of the sheet. 
Now we'll just very carefully put the pieces on. And again, you'll notice that I take the tweezers and push it so that it's flush to the um, to one side of, of the piece. Um, and that means when we come to put the next piece, it will actually overlap that piece. I like using the chisel to make the cut because I get a nice clean cut. Um, again, that's your choice, but um, I'm also going to put a little CA when it's all completed on each of the joins and then sand it down because uh, I don't really want to see that line at all. So you'll notice I've made this second one slightly larger than this piece. And that's because it's going to not just um, go on the edge, but it needs to overlap so that you get a nice clean square line. Well, I have to say, all the um, the internal recesses look um, the same. So that's a huge improvement over my earlier trials. They'll still look a bit rough, so we'll see how they how they clean up. But I'm really much much happier with the result this time. In any case, this is the final. This is the final result. This was a very interesting exercise and I'm so glad that I spent the time uh, doing it. It still has some cleaning up to do and I have to take the pins down to nine inches. Um, but that's not an issue, it's very easy to do on the gym bonds. So we're gonna bring this to an end, but just to show you that it was well worth spending the time and effort to do this detail instead of this detail um, it, it really makes a whole world of difference